Hello everyone, hope all of you are doing great. Uh, today we'll be discussing about one of the trickiest items of PTE, but not one of the very important ones either. Uh, this is called reorder paragraphs. Uh, this is the third item in your reading module. Uh, so in this item, they will be giving you certain sentences, around four to five sentences. You have to arrange them in the correct order to make a sensible, logical paragraph. So as I said, this is one of the trickiest items, uh, but not as important as many other items. So just to check how, how important that is, we need to have a look at the score distribution table. So let's do that first. All right, so here we have our score distribution table. As you, as you already remember, we have mentioned this multiple times in all the other videos. In this table, what you can see is, these are all the 20 types of questions in PT arranged according to total marks from highest to lowest. So the item that we are discussing today, reorder paragraph is somewhere here. It's not on the top areas, which means it's not as important as these many questions. So if we count it, I believe maybe 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. This is just the 14th important question in the exam. It is not as important as the remaining 13 on top. And this question carries a total of 5.9 points. You can say, let's say around six to seven points, 5.9 points uh, out of 90 for your reading module. As you can see, it does not give points to any other module. All the points are given only to your reading module itself. It is in the reading module and it is giving points to reading module itself. You'll be getting minimum two questions and maximum three questions in your reorder paragraphs. Now, coming back to the task. So I'll just show you a sample screenshot first. So you can see how it is gonna look like. So reorder paragraphs. This is a sample screenshot of the question that you could get in the exam. In this task, you will have four to five sentences given on the left-hand side. You have to drag and drop them on the right-hand side table in the correct order. So you, read, you need to read every sentence and find out what is first, what is second, and arrange them in a proper sensible paragraph. Now, the scoring for this one itself is a little bit uh, complicated, I would say, because many people are unaware of the scoring and many people have a misunderstanding regarding the scoring. Most people believe that if you put the first sentence in the first position, you get one point, second sentence in the second position, you get one point, but that's not how the scoring works here. The scoring is not for independent positions. The computer would be giving you 1.4 correct adjacent pair of sentences. So each pair of sentence would be given one point. There is no negative marking. Minimum score is zero. Contribute points only to the reading part around 5.9, let's say six points only to your reading module. Now, when I say the computer is giving one point for each pair, I'll make it more clearer for you. Let's assume we have uh, five sentences. Let's name them A, B, C, D, E. And let's assume a, B, C, D, E is the correct order of the answer. So A first, B second, C third, D fourth, and E fifth. This is the correct order of the answer. So many people believe that if you put A first, one point, B second, one point, that's not how it works. You get one point for each pair. So if you have the answer A, B, C, D, E, A, B is a pair. A, B together gets one point. B, C together, one point. C, D together, one point. DE together, one point. So if there are five sentences given to you, you can make four pairs using those, which means if there are five sentences, the question would be giving you four points. Again, remember guys, this four points that I mentioned here is the scoring criteria. This means nothing out of your 90. The score out of 90 is different. That's what we have seen in the table before. This is just a scoring system, scoring system for the computer. So the computer would be giving you one point for each pair. So even if the entire paragraph is not accurate, if, even if you don't have every sentence correct in their correct positions, if you have each pair of sentence correct, like let's say you, you have written the answer B, C, D, E, A, which means the correct answer was A, B, C, D, E. So if you write down, write down the answer B, C, D, E, A, we need to check how many pairs we have correct. So one pair in the correct answer was A, B. We don't have A, B together. Do you have B, C together? Yes, in B, C, D, E, A, B, C is one pair correct. C, D also together, D, E also together. So if you write the answer B, C, D, E, A, the independent position of all the sentences are wrong here. 
like a was supposed to be first you put it in the last position b was supposed to be second you put it in the first position c was supposed to be third you put it in the second position so independent position of all the sentences are wrong even then you are still getting three points for b c c d and d e you have three pairs correct which means the independent position of sentences doesn't matter here as long as you have all the correct pairs but then again if you get all the correct pairs automatically the independent positions also will be correct now at the same time if you look at the last line here a b c b e this is another wrong answer that we are giving so instead of giving a b c d e let's assume we gave the correct we gave the answer a d c b e which means a has correct independent position which is first c which was supposed to be third you have put it in third itself e which was supposed to be fifth you have put it in fifth position itself but you have just switched d and b the position of only d and b is wrong but when you look at pairing here we don't have ab together we don't have bc together cb is there but that is not equal to bc it should be in the correct order as well cd we don't have cd together de we don't have de together so in the last line when you give the answer as a d c b e even though three sentences are in their correct independent positions we don't have any pairs in it which means if your answer is a d c b e you get only zero point zero out of four and in the previous answer b c d e a you will be getting three points out of four because we have three correct pairs out of the four so from here we can understand the computer doesn't care what is first what is second what is third it will check any two sentences which are supposed to be together if they are together in your answer you will be getting one point for each pair okay which is the reason why when you try to solve your reorder paragraph questions you need to find out the connections between sentences you don't have to worry what is first what is second you need to find if there is any connection between two sentences just put them together anywhere in your answer you will be getting one point for that pair okay now like i said in reading module you should not be expecting any specific techniques or steps or methods because all the questions in your reading module are taken from already existing articles already existing blogs or journals or newspapers so every author has their own style of writing of course there are basic grammatical rules that everyone would be following but we cannot have a fixed set of steps to solve any question here so just like we did for your fill in the blanks question i can give you some clues which can help you to a certain extent but like i said you cannot expect them to work 100% of the time it could help you around let's say 70 80% remaining is you need to go with the logical flow of the paragraph you need to understand the context of the paragraph and most importantly you need to have good reading skills if you have a habit of reading books this question won't be difficult for you all right but then again i can help you in the best way possible today giving you some clues and that's what we're going to proceed with so i'm going to give you certain clues which you can use here so first clue here what do you have to do if there are four to five sentences given to you read all of them read all of them and find out the independent stand alone statement independent sentence mostly introductory statement independent sentence means if you take that sentence out of the passage and if you read it separately it will make complete sense to you it doesn't de depend on any other sentence so sentences with he she it cannot be independent because he she it is referring to something previously mentioned so if you if you see a sentence which gives you the complete idea and is stand alone by itself that could be most probably your topic sentence any sentence that is independent stand alone or introduces a topic you can put it in the first position but keeping it in the first posi position is not going to give you any points because the computer doesn't give points for position the computer gives you points for pairs so if you found an introduction statement you need to find out what is the elaboration to that so if the first sentence already introduced a topic there should be another sentence which is elaborating more which is explaining more about the same topic which is introduced in your topic sentence for example as you can see here the first topic sentence arimus titanic was a british passenger liner that sank in the north atlantic ocean in the early hours of 15th april 1912 this is a sentence which may complete sense to you you don't have any doubts when you read that because it gives you the complete idea there was an accident uh, with the ship titanic and that happened on 15th april 1912 it doesn't depend on any other sentence so this these kind of sentences which are complete in itself you can put it in the 
first position. So if you have an introductory statement like this, there should be another sentence which is elaborating more, which is the second example you can see. There was an estimated, there was an estimated where? in the accident of Titanic. There was an estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard and more than 1,500 died. This is more elaboration in the introduction or the accident which was previously mentioned in our topic sentence. So this is the first step that you should do when you try to solve your reorder paragraph questions. Read all of the sentence and find out the standalone independent introductory statement, put it in the first position, and find out what is it introducing and find out the next sentence, which is elaborating more about the same topic. So first you can look for your topic sentence. Second would be your elaboration. If you put them together, then you have one point. Putting topic sentence alone, no point. Putting elaboration alone, no point. If they are together in your answer, you get one point. This is one way of finding your pairs. Another method is, this works almost all the time. I could say 100% of the time, pronoun or reference method. So like I said, when I asked you to read all the sentences given to you, don't simply read them without understanding, read them in detail and look for words like he, she, it, this, that, such, they. These words are pronouns or reference words. These words are referring to something that is already previously mentioned. For example, if you have a sentence given uh, to you, those measures were illegal. This is an incomplete sentence because it, those measures were illegal. We have a question now. Which measures are they talking about? So if you see a sentence starting with those measures were illegal, you need to find out another sentence which explains what the measures are. So you can find the pair like that. So if you found a sentence which explains the measures, immediately after that, you can use the sentence, those measures were illegal. This is a very important clue, works almost 100% of the time. So when you read the sentences, look for he, she, it, this, that, such, we, and these kind of words. And for example, you have a sentence, he was an amazing person. We have a question, who are they talking about? So look for a sentence with the name of a person. So after the name of the person, you can put the sentence with he. Okay, so look for pronouns or reference words. Very similar to that connective method. If you see any sentences starting with however, moreover, furthermore, on the other hand, these words are called connectives or connecting words. These words are used to connect two sentences. So if you see any sentences starting, any sentence starting with the connective, definitely we cannot put it at first because there should be another sentence previous to it, which is connected to the sentence starting with the connective. So if you see a sentence, moreover, this was, uh, this happened on 1912. So we have a question, moreover, what happened? And so you need to find out the other sentence, which gives you the complete idea. So if you see any sentences starting with the connective, Look at the sentence with the connective and find out another sentence. If it is uh, another sentence which is more related to it, uh, if this, if the connective is moreover or furthermore, or another sentence which is contradictory if the connective is however or on the other hand, because connectives like however or on the other hand is used to connect two statements which are contradictory. For example, uh, this example that we have given here, the job wasn't interesting. However, the pay was good. So even though the job wasn't good, the pay was, the job wasn't good, the pay was good. So they, these are contradictory statements connected using contradictory connector. However, we can also use on the, other, on the other hand. Now, so when you see sentences starting with however or on the other hand, look for contradictory statements, put them together. If you see uh, connect sentences starting with uh, connectives like moreover or furthermore, look for sentences with similar idea because moreover or furthermore is giving more elaboration. So it should be the same idea, not contradictory. All right, similar to that, uh, subject verb object. We have discussed this in fill in the blanks as well. So if you, if you want, you can have a look at that too. Subject verb object is the basic structure of most sentences in English. So a subject is, is who does the action, verb is the action and object is thing on which the action is being done. So if I have a sentence here, I teach PTE. I is the subject, teach is the verb, PT is the object. Now, how can you use this to solve reorder paragraphs, right? So to explain this in very simple terms, forget about subject, verb, objects, or forget about grammar. The simplest way to explain this, if you see a sentence ending with a particular word, and if that particular word is there in the beginning of another sentence given to you, that clearly means they are supposed to be continuation. They are supposed to be together. For example, here, the first line, I teach PTE. 
is ending with the word PTE. And we have another sentence, PTE is an English test. So that is explaining what PTE is. So the ending word of the previous sentence PTE is there in the beginning of another sentence, which means they're supposed to be together. So when you have put many sentences, four to five sentences given to you, look for ending words and beginning words, same in any two, put them together. If you see the ending word of one sentence in the beginning of another one, put them together. That is one way of finding your pace. This also works almost all the time. And the next clue, which is pretty basic, if you see any sentences starting with overall, in conclusion, eventually, we can definitely not put them at first because overall or in conclusion is showing up the end, um, the conclusion of something, obviously. So sentences starting with overall, in conclusion, eventually should be kept at the last of your entire paragraph. Basic clue. Uh, now, chronology. Don't rely on this so much because this there are many cases where this won't work. Uh, I would say around 50, 60% is good enough. Chronology means if you see dates in two different sentences, one sentence has a date uh, in the year 1995 and another sentence has a date in the year 2017. Normally, 1995 would be in the initial places, 2017 would be coming later. But this also you need to remember, these need not be immediately after because the sentence with 1995 can be first, 2017 can be second, third, fourth, or fifth. It could be anywhere later, not immediately after the first one. But then again, like I said, it may not work all the time because there are many paragraphs where they talk about the present first and then they refer to the past. So in that case, 2017 could come first and 1995 could come later. So make sure you don't use it blindly, read the sentence and make sure it is logical, make sure it makes sense to you. All right. Now, this works almost all the time, almost 100% of the time. If you see sentences with the full name of a person and short name of a person, short name or surname of a person. For example, William Shakespeare was an English poet, playwright and actor. And another sentence with Shakespeare was born and brought up in Stratford upon Avon, Warwickshire. So the full name of the person is William Shakespeare. So we refer to a person using the surname only later. So initially when you introduce a person, we always use the full name. So the sentence with William Shakespeare will be coming in the initial sentences, could be first, second, third. Shakespeare would be coming later. So if William Shakespeare is first, Shakespeare can be second, third, fourth or fifth could be later. So if you see full name of a person, put it in the initial places uh, with a surname would be coming later in the paragraph. Now, the last clue given here, it's a rare case. Let's say you have five sentences given to you. You have paired four of them. And one sentence is very confusing for you. You, you are not able to find any connection with any other sentence. It is not directly related to any other sentence, but somehow related to the main topic. And it has no connection with any other sentence, kind of like an unpairable sentence. If you find a sentence which is very confusing and unpairable, almost 80% of the time, it'll be the last one. You can put it in the last position. Very rarely it can come first, but never in the in between pairs. It can come at first. For example, if you have a sentence which is a question, not a statement, it's a question. And if all the remaining four sentences, that you have five sentences, one sentence is a question, and all the remaining four sentences are answer to the question. In that case, you can put it at first. But if this question has no relation to the remaining four sentences, put it in the last position. Okay, so that's pretty much what I can explain regarding Riyadh. I know it's really confusing. Uh, so the best way to do this is practice as many questions as possible. And like I said, when you practice, don't practice random questions, practice repeated questions from the exams, from the materials which we have provided you, especially to the students that are with us. Uh, and also if you are looking for more classes, just uh, reach us on 0432269874. I'll repeat the number again at the end of the video. So this is how reorder paragraphs works. So just a summary, you'll be getting two to three questions and very important time management in reading as we have already mentioned in the other videos. In reading, the computer will not be allocating specific time for each task. The computer gives you total time for all the questions together. So when you manage your time, you should be spending only around maximum two minutes for each reorder paragraphs. So doing this question, pairing all the sentences within two minutes can be a bit difficult at first. But when you begin practicing, don't worry about the time. When you practice in the initial days, try to get the correct pairs, try to get your final answer correct. Gradually, when you're used to the techniques, start working on your time as well. So keep a timer and make sure that you're finishing every question within your 
two minutes time because if you take more than two minutes here then you will not be getting sufficient time for your fill in the blanks question which could be coming after this in the exam all right now to help you further to because explaining is easy to do to use it in questions it can be a bit tricky so to help you further i'll try to do one question with you which is not that hard but not simple either so this is the question for you so as you can see there are five sentences given so the first step that we have to do if you want you know, you can pause the audio and try to do solve it yourself and then uh, like start the video and then you can listen to the answer if you want to i'm going to explain right away so we have five sentences given so first step to do read all of them and find out the independent stand alone topic statement i'll just come back to the rules again here the first topic sentence find out the stand alone independent statement so what we do we read all the sentences first sentence but in scotland three banks are still allowed to issue bank notes a sentence starting with but a conjunction cannot be the first one so eliminated it that's not our first sentence when this bank was founded in 1695 scots coinage was in short supply and of uncertain value compared with english dutch flemish or french coin when this bank was founded in 1695 which bank are they talking about is also not a complete statement we have a question we don't know which bank they're talking about so this also cannot be the stand alone independent statement eliminated third one to face growth of trade it was deemed necessary to remedy this lack of an adequate currency which lack of currency so if they have to say this lack of currency the sentence previous to it should explain the lack of currency so this also is an incomplete sentence which is referring to something previously mentioned eliminated now the fourth sentence the first scottish bank to do this was the bank of scotland again this what this to, to do what again we have no complete idea here we don't know what did the bank of scotland do for the first time for the first scottish bank to do this was the bank of scotland we don't know what they did so the first four sentences given here are not stand alone independent statements all of them depend on a previous statement now the last one we have in most countries it is only the government through their central banks who are permitted to issue currency so this sentence is complete in itself it gives you the complete idea so they're giving you a statement usually in every country government is the one who issues the currency it doesn't depend on any other sentence it is complete in itself so we can put sentence number 5 in the first position all right now we need to continue so the first statement said usually governments issue currency now we need to find an elaboration to it now if you read the fourth sentence here the first scottish bank to do this was the bank of scotland why do they have to say scottish bank now we do not mention anything about banks in scotland yet so this cannot be the continuation to face growth of trade it was deemed necessary to remedy this lack of uh, this lack of adequate currency the sentence number 5 did not mention anything about lack of currency so we cannot say this lack of currency immediately after it so it's not the third one either when this bank was founded in 1695 sentence number 5 have not mentioned the name of any particular bank so that also cannot be the next one but sentence number 1 but in scotland three banks are still allowed to issue bank notes this matches with sentence number 5 because it is contradicting starting with but is a contradictory conjunction so sentence number 5 said usually governments issue currency now we are saying but in scotland there are three banks who are allowed to issue bank notes even though it is government in most of the countries in scotland three banks are allowed to issue currency so now we can connect 5 and 1 so putting 5 and 1 together now we get one point putting 5 first no point because we need to find a pair so 5 and 1 together we get one point so now we say in scotland there are three banks who are allowed to issue bank notes now the continuation of that would be sentence number 4 the first scottish bank now we understand why they said scottish bank because we, we already mentioned about three banks in scotland now we can continue with the first scottish bank to do this was the bank of scotland now they have mentioned the name of a bank so we can continue with when this bank which bank the bank of scotland which is mentioned in the previous sentence when this bank was founded in 1695 Scots coinage was in short supply and of uncertain value compared with English, Dutch, Flemish, or French coin. So they have mentioned Scots coinage was in short supply. Now we can put sentence number three. To face growth of trade, it was deemed necessary to remedy this lack of an adequate currency. Which lack of currency? Scot coinage was in short supply. So that is the lack of currency mentioned in the previous sentence. Okay. So the final answer for this one would be five one. 
four, two, and then three. Okay, I'll give you the screenshot. This is the complete answer. In most countries, government issue currency. However, in Scotland, three banks are allowed to issue banknotes. And out of the three, the first one is the Bank of Scotland. And when this bank was founded in 1695, there was a shortage of Scots coinage. And to remedy that lack, the, uh, this to face growth of trade, it was deemed necessary to remedy this lack of currency. Okay, so this is how your reorder paragraph works. So I believe all of you are clear with the scoring. So most important is scoring. It's not for each independent sentences, it's for each adjacent pair of sentences. Uh, so first position, second position, doesn't matter. You find any connection between two sentences, just join them together and use the clues which I have provided. Like I said, it will help you around 70, 80%. Most of them works 100% of the time, like topic elaboration works almost all the time. Pronoun method works almost all the time. Connective method, yes. Subject, verb, object, yes. Overall in conclusion, most of the time. Chronology, let's say 60%. Full name, short name, almost all the time. Independent also around 70, 80%. Okay, and as we have mentioned, uh, you should not be wasting too much time on this because it's the, the we counted 14th important question in the exam. So it's not as important as the remaining 13 ones which are on top. Uh, but still, if you're targeting for uh, a band seven or band eight for you, everything is important. So try to practice these questions as much as possible. And as I had already mentioned, when you practice in the initial days, when you're doing this for the first time, don't worry about the time. Take all the time that you need, but make sure you're very clear with the techniques. You're very clear about finding the pairs. Once you go to the strategies and once you're very familiar with the strategies and techniques, then time yourself and make sure you finish each reorder paragraph question within two minutes time. Okay, two minutes maximum. All right, so that is a reorder paragraph. This is the third item in reading. 14th important question in the exam. Uh, students targeting for seven and eight, please focus on this too. If you're targeting for less than seven, it's okay. It's, this is not that important for you. Spend more time on the remaining 13 important question types. All right, guys. So like I said, um, uh, for repeated questions from the exam, for more guidance, if you need one-to-one -one coaching, if you need any help in PT preparation, feel free to reach us on 0432-269-874 or you can just straight away come to our website and book a demo session. So, all righty, so that's pretty much it for today. I hope to see you soon with another video. Until then, keep practicing and keep supporting us. Thank you.